I can hear you a little bit better. Yeah. Hey, a little bit is better than nothing, right? It's better than nothing. Yeah, I'm really going to have to to struggle to hear you. But uh, anyway, uh, you and I uh, talk every day, which people may not know. But uh, we also play in a band together, which most people do know. That band is protagonist. And we just released a record called Fallouts from the Chronicle. And could you tell us a little bit about that record? Because yeah, it's, not well, a, it's not a traditional release, no pun intended. No, it's like what we call a rarities collection. So when we recorded the Chronicle back in 2007, we recorded a ton of stuff, not knowing what would go on the record and what we would have left over. And um, we did the first mix down of the record at our friend's place, uh, The Creep House with Eric Victor, who had done our previous records. And when we were going through the track list, trying to figure out what would fit and what would not, uh, Generation Lost, Killing Fields, the reasoning with time re recording just didn't fit what we uh, ended up kind of wanting to do with it. And then we also decided to record Three Boyle songs, which is the side of our favorite split, which is the Boyle's Violent Society split, and then um, a Violent Society song. And we, uh, I was talking with Vinny, it was like early last year, and we knew that like the 10 year anniversary of the Chronicle was coming up and trying to figure out what to do. Uh, with it for it. For those who don't know, Vinny is Vinny Fiorello from Paper and Plastic Records, a longtime uh, supporter and advocate of uh, of many bands, in, including protagonists. So when you guys kind of put this idea together to have all of these songs um, focused around the 10 year anniversary of the Chronicle, um, but a few of those songs are cover songs and uh, you guys have released covers before. Uh, three of them were by the Boyles, a uh, Philadelphia punk band that I used to be in. Uh, one of them was by Violent Society. And this, uh, this question I have for you kind of speaks to a bigger, a bigger uh, a curiosity I have about you, is that you're very uh, loyal and attached to the Boyles and Violent Society and a lot of things that have to do with that Philadelphia Westchester punk scene um, that you first got into. Uh, you're also very into Phantasm, which I know was the first horror movie, uh, suspense, thriller movie, perhaps one of the first movies you ever saw, let alone whatever genre. Um, so my question for you is, are you attracted to the nostalgia of something that you love when, when you discover something that you love and now you're so far removed from that time period? Are you attracted to the, the nostalgia of it or are you finding new insights into these things that you fell in love with years ago? I would say constantly finding insights into things that like I fell in love with in the past. Um, like let's take Phantasm for instance. I don't look at Phantasm as like, oh, this movie I used to like when I was a kid. That's like fun to watch. It's not. It's not my Princess Bride. It's just like my favorite horror film, my favorite movie. Um, through like the community of other fans that like that movie, I've like met a ton of good friends, like lifelong friendships. Um, I'm really big into like collecting phantasm memorabilia. That's a number one hobby for me. So it, it's a constant thing, not sort of like a, oh, that was fun. Let me go back into it. It's not like a, a gimmick hobby of, of any sort. And I mean, sure, take the Boyles sure. and Violent Society for me. Like those are bands, like I just went on a walk like an hour ago and I wanted something kind of angry, powerful and urgent. So I went and put on the uh, the live sweatshop from the Destroy the Creep House release. And just like covering the songs on Fallout from the Chronicle and listening to those songs, like they just pack a, an urgency and a power that I still resonates with me right now, resonated with me when I discovered the Boils in 1999, and I think will resonate with me 20 years from now. Yeah, and that's certainly a sign of great art, and uh, it's, a, it's a difficult question to pin on, on a guest um, because it's something that I think we all kind of grapple with. A lot of people from our generation, um, you know, will get labeled as nerds or man babies or whatever it may be, but for, for loving things that we love and that we discovered from our childhood, um, but being able to find new insight and, and new resolve into what that art brings to our lives, you're in a unique... Uh, situation though because you're then able to turn it around and translate it into something that your band is is a part of and uh 
you know, what was the idea behind re releasing those cover songs, really? Uh, recording them back when we did the record or releasing them? Or both? Uh, well, releasing them, because I know, I know it sometimes when you're recording, sometimes you just got to fill tape or you've got this extra time and you're all there and you say, fuck it, let's just record these songs. Um, but what was the sole purpose of, of releasing them now, I guess? I mean, to kind of piggyback off what I was just saying about like the power and resonance of those songs, they're my favorite. And I, I can speak for John and I think I can speak for you yeah. in saying that they're three of the best punk rock songs ever written. I think they um, really represent the boils in that time period and represent sort of the foundation that those songs in that era played into the, the DNA of the band. Which in some ways when we recorded the Chronicle, like the future of the band was pretty uncertain. We hadn't teamed up with Paper and Plastic yet. Um, Brian was getting ready to move off to Gainesville. John had already moved off to, to DC. So it was kind of like this uncertainty of like, I feel that we, just like we kind of like, we had to record the Chronicle, I thought we had to record the covers of those songs. Um, they sort of sat around on hard drives. Um, our friend Spencer down in Boca, he did mixes of them. I recorded all the vocals for those songs with him. And um, so they kind of lived on hard drives and in iTunes libraries in some, some way, shape or form. But we kind of wanted them to match that, the power that's in the mix down there. Yeah, the sure, that, sure. That Jamie did, so that's kind of why we uh, went to revisit it last year. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, um... It, it's not a secret, but not necessarily public knowledge yet, but maybe someday, but the, the protagonist vault is vast. I mean, there's a lot in there. Um, you know, uh, this release has nine songs on it. You guys could have put 39 on it between all of the old demos. You guys were always very uh, prolific, which I admired about you, but you were always good about getting things documented, um, uh, even if it was just in like a, a really good demo form. Um, but something that you mentioned that I wanted to kind of go back to we're in 2020 window. now in, in the strangest timeline and uh, we're talking about the fallout of the Chronicle by protagonist. The Chronicle was the the record um, that really kind of saved your ass and uh, I wanted to ask you about the resolve that you had specifically. Um, you mentioned that Brian had moved away, John had moved away, you had uh, kind of a rotating uh, number of drummers, a rotating number of bass players, myself included. But what was what was your resolve to keep protagonists going as opposed to starting a new band or uh, just doing what so many of our contemporaries have done, which is just to give up and move on? Yeah, I think the unique thing about protagonists is it's like, you have me and John who are blood brothers, so it's that like shared tapestry of a story you have our best friend being Brian, um, our best friend being Jeffy, who, you know, hadn't been like the official drummer in the band for a few years at that point, but had always been there when we needed him the, like the most, you know? And um, I think that friendship is pretty, like the kind of the importance of like friendship and loyalty is very present on that record. So it was like the record and the music was emblematic of the friendship. Yeah, I, I think I gonna... for everybody in protagonist that like the, the core members, whether it was at that period or the core members that exist in the band now for the past decade, like it's it's a, there's always a little bit of a bigger picture to it. It's not just like oh yeah, I just, you know yeah I, I'm playing a punk band with my friends. Like it's like essentially brothers, you know, some blood related, some not. But at the end of the day, it's it's all you know one compact unit yeah and i guess that speaks as well to the um the idea that there's so many bands in punk and hardcore that carry themselves in such high regard that they they find it more benefiting to break up and get back together and kind of get on a reunion thing as opposed to just sticking it out and seeing it through um was that ever something that crossed your mind no i mean i think I know from like a business perspective that works for some bands. I think it's kind of corny, kind of stupid, honestly. Um, yeah. You know, and I mean like a manufactured 
breakup of like, let's stop, we'll come back in three years and it'll be a little bit bigger than it was the last time or like a whole hell of a lot bigger than it was the last time. Like, this is also sort of, uh, you know, we haven't been in a normal structure for a long time. So we don't get together and have normal band practice once or twice a week. So if it's doing kind of PR stuff for the band, um, if it's working on new songs and demos and garage band, like it's all part of a bigger like therapeutic process. So it, I've always viewed it as a constant. It's like, you know, my outlet, the outlet of the other yeah. members of the band. So to call it quits to like come back a few years later and do like a, you know, right. kind of like a batch of shows around that just seems kind of corny to me. I, I'd rather break new ground, find new listeners online, uh, whatever we do tours, you know, come across new faces then then do it in that other way. Like, just seems yeah. Weird. Yeah, no, that, that, that makes sense. Um, and I think that speaks to the character of the band as well, notwithstanding my participation in it, um, but really on, on you and, and your brother and Brian specifically. Um, in quarantine, in the shelter in place ordinance, what have you been doing to stay creative? Um, have you been able to stay creative? Have you felt stifled? Um, and, uh, you know, I, just be honest if it's, if it's been, uh, it's been hard on everybody, but uh, I'm curious what what your situation has been like from a creative standpoint, um, being unable to kind of do what you normally do. Yeah, I, I mean, I feel like uh, in terms of people that are very active and kind of going out, like my outlet is like in this office or the office bedroom of wherever I'm living at that time. So quarantine hasn't really um like done damage to a creative process i would say it's improved it because i have kind of less outside distractions like i don't have two midnight movies a week that i want to go see in boston like i don't have um kind of my social gatherings with my core group of friends up here like i just have you know this house and going on walks and like when i go on walks i play demos that my brother sends me and i like work on those uh, we just got some new songs mixed down, so I've been listening to those. Um, so I would say this, um, like an upside to the whole quarantine situation and like the, you know, pandemic epidemic that we're in is being able to focus on stuff that that matters without distractions in in the household. And that's of course there's like the looming distraction of like the events that are taking place outside in the world. It's not. Um, an ignorance to that at all. It's just trying right. to stay positive, stay productive, stay busy. Yeah, exactly. And I guess you've been helping your girlfriend with school projects as well, which is, you know, the dutiful and right thing to do. Well, I, I, uh, thanks, I, man. I, sorry about the technical difficulties, but I hope this worked out for everybody. I appreciate you being on. I miss you. I'm excited to be on your coast again. That said, it's unclear when we'll actually get to hang out in person. Yeah, I've already been planning other. a road trip with uh, one or two of my friends to come see you. So I'm just yeah, trying to yeah. figure out how that will work out. All right, man. Well, protagonist, Pete's band and my band, we have a new record out called Fallout from the Chronicle. It is available everywhere worldwide now. And uh, I highly recommend it. It's very good. And uh, it's, it's, it's a pretty brutal and angry hardcore punk record so if that's your thing you will love it um but thanks pete it was great seeing you great talking to you thank you for being a guest on the berman hour um i'm gonna be back tomorrow as you know uh with yeah, somebody well, else who's you have coming up uh well tomorrow uh i have uh sal from rebuilder awesome. he was another uh massachusetts guy and uh we're gonna be talking shit talking shop and um probably getting into trouble because that's what uh he and i do apparently but uh <laughs> all good well thank you so much and uh we'll talk to you soon we'll have you back on sounds good can't wait all right thanks everyone for tuning in this has been the berman hour cheers